This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. i got to run this by you guys because we've got several requests from listeners because it did happen, uh, I guess, yesterday or day. I can't remember. It was yesterday or day before. But they think that uh, when we bring Judd up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that you should just very slowly slide up poke salad annie every time he comes on <laughs> <laughs> i do love that so did you guys ever listen to the whole song i uh, nope no i, did, I didn't uh, i i had it like that first like what with the sawtooth or saw toad woman or whatever that i had mm-hmm. that line stuck in my head all day though yesterday what i just mean saying richard that. Wretched, spiteful, straight raise a tote woman. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, that being said, what I was saying all day to myself was completely different. So people just thought I was crazy. <laughs> so did you, when you ordered stuff, did you walk up there kind of go, and some yonder been down south too much. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this so you understand what I'm talking about. Here's and my then, order. And then they would say, what? <laughs> and then, what? What the hell are you talking about? So I just uh, had an experience. I went for a walk, and it was a great walk and all the rest of it. Uh, but the, uh, the only thing that was different is I ran into a friend of mine who didn't have a shirt on. Hmm. And I was thinking, that's interesting. Out for a walk at, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning, you're not wearing a shirt? Is it that toasty that you can't wear a shirt when you're walking? It's like, okay, whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah, was he, he wasn't out for like a run or anything. It was just like a casual shirtless just walk a, first thing in the morning. I mean, he was he was walking at a pace, so it wasn't just a walk. He was walking at yeah. pace and all that stuff. But still, I ain't walking around with my shirt off at 7 o'clock in the morning. No, it's like, the did, did you ever make it home or are you too drunk to get in the car? Is that What's the deal? <laughs> right? It's got to be one of the two. Because, yeah, unless you're doing some vigorous workout and sweating a ton. Yes. Keep your shirt on. That is exactly right. Now, we just uh, been doing a lot. Matter of fact, I, I could probably bring it up very quickly here that uh, we're leaving on uh, on Saturday to go up to Disney World with the kids and hang out there for five days. And then when I come back uh, the Monday after that, in other words, you know, just about 12 days from now, I'm going to start that uh, weight loss program. I got my walking up. Well, it's been up at eight miles a day pretty much consistently now. And I'm going to you know, be talking about that. Mostly I'll talk about that on social media, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's just Tom. There's a Tom Bernard show and there's Tom Bernard. The Tom Bernard Facebook one is the word that I talk, the one that I talk to people on. So if you want to hop on, uh, join Tom Bernard Facebook page, it's right there. It's easy to get on. And thank you already to a few thousand listeners or whatever it is. It's, it's great. It's been working out wonderful. But What's great about that is I go out for walks or, you know, I'm going to start lifting weights again. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to do all these things. And and to have people responding every day to to that is really, really helpful. You ever done that? Talk to people on social media when you got a workout going? Oh, not specifically just for workouts, but on social media, but definitely talking to people that are also working out or kind of in the community that you are helps keep you on track and keeps you motivated to do it. Do you have a certain amount of weight that you're trying to lose? I have a oh, certain, yeah, I'm on a weight. Well, I, I haven't weighed myself, but it was at 50, so it's probably a little less. Because I started out at 316 a while back, and then I got down to 265. And then I'm probably in, I don't know, the low 260s now, and I want to get down to two, 214 because I haven't weighed 214 since I was in ninth grade at Jordan Junior High School when I started uh, lifting weights. So, I'm, I, But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to firm it up and lift weights this time because so, that two, 215 was not, I hadn't been lifting weights yet then, mm-hmm. but yeah, I just, uh, I'd like to live longer. You know, if I still weighed 315, I'd probably be dead by now. I, you know, it's, well, it's true. I mean, guys who, who are that big, whether it's muscle, fat, whatever it is, you do not live that long weighing that much. No, it's tough on your, your frame. And then it usually yep. has a lot of effect on your organs as well with carrying the extra weight, which people don't really think about. They think more. Please just don't talk about my organ. Your joints. The show. You know. <laughs> no, you're right. It's the joints. Organ. You're absolutely right about that. It's, it's everything. It affects everything. And, and I will tell you something. What's weird is when I wake up in the morning, if I've got a little bit of an attitude, because mm-hmm. I do wake up once in a while and say, oh, Christ, whatever. By the time I'm done walking, I'm happy as hell. Isn't that amazing? It makes me really happy. What, what is that 
that flows through your system makes you happy. Dopamine? I guess. That's I probably what it is. Don't yeah. Think that, that's, that's about right. I think that's right. There's like, there's like, and because I worked out, I haven't worked out in probably two, three weeks because I've just been busy. And the other day I went to the gym for the first time and was like, you know what? I feel good. Like, I feel like just naturally happier as I'm walking around about my day. So yeah, even whether it's a full out workout or just a quick walk in the morning, well, exercise helps you feel better. But now that is a different workout as well because you have to remember if you go to the gym, no matter where it is, if it's in some building or it's an actual, you know, it's like Lifetime or wherever mm -hmm. you go, Anytime Fitness, whatever the deal is, getting back into the conversation of weightlifting is hilarious. Just because, well, again, I've told that story a million times. When uh, Animal used to work out at the gym out in Plymouth, well, Hawk and Animal both did. But then uh, Hawk moved to Florida, but go out there with Animal, and people always want to run up to Animal. Animal, Animal, I just lifted so much weight. But my favorite was when this guy, he benched 300, which is an accomplishment. Not mm -hmm. everyone can bench 300 pounds. There's no oh, yeah. question about that. Yeah. But he ran, Tommy, Tommy, I, I benched 300. I'm like, oh, congratulations, man. That's phenomenal, benching 300 pounds. And I told him not everybody can do it. I've told this story before, I know, but it's such a great story. Animal comes walking in. He runs over to Animal and goes, Animal, Animal, for the first time ever, I just benched 300 pounds. There's a pause, and he goes, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Animal was a great guy. That was so sad. He died way too, well, both of them died way, way too young. But oh, yeah. once again, you carry that much weight, whether it's fat or muscle, or you cannot carry that much weight and live. That's just a fact. Yeah. Well, and a lot of those like bodybuilders, when you're professional, it's a lot of bulk up, bulk up, and then starve yep. yourself before a show because you want to get rid of all the water weight and yep. extra weight, stuff like that to thin yourself out. So all that stress going from one extreme to the other on your body is not great. There's no question about it, but you know, well, they stay on top of it, right? Everything will be fine. Don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah, limit your steroid intake and you'll be fine. Yeah, there'll be no steroids at uh, 72. I am not doing steroids. That would be a really, hey, Tom looked great yesterday and now he's dead. What happened? You just come in built like Officer Dave and, yeah. you know, at the course of a week. Yeah. Start talking like this just yeah. because I got so muscular. Let me just tell you something about the traffic. That'd be pretty good. That'd he's dead, but boy, is he in great shape. Look at those muscles. <laughs> Look at those <laughs> Look at how muscular dead man is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. I just saw two words that just popped up. Did one of you change my uh my news feed? Yes, yeah, it was me. I'll be I'll be honest. Yes. Okay. I have the first to. the first line in the of all the stories printed on my page, uh a wiener connoisseur. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right, damn right, that's my work. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, but except for it could be two different kinds of wieners. That's the only problem with it. What are you connoisseuring? Is what I'd like to. Hey, it's your business. I mean, don't get me wrong. You don't like to eat the wiener? It's good. Good for you. I'm happy for you, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what's weird about that? And I, this is very, and I think I told you guys this a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday. It says uh, now hiring a wiener connoisseur to measure uh, hot dogs at MLB parks. That's a hell of a coincidence because I just had my first hot dog in 30 years on, uh, I think it was Monday. Okay, that's so funny you bring that up because I had, it was like late 2023. Me and my buddies are talking. My buddy, I don't know how we got to the conversation, but like how many hot dogs does somebody eat in a year? And he's like, do you think somebody eats 100? I was like, yeah, absolutely. My other buddy, no, zero chance you eat 100. So I said, I'll keep track because I feel like I eat hot dogs a decent amount. Mm -hmm. we're, up to, we're up to 18 so far so we're a little <laughs> we're a little off pace here in 2024 but i'm expecting to make up that number and get back on track during baseball season yeah i'll say summer's a busy month for the hot dog consumption yes, absolutely yeah, it was just since monday it's only yes. wednesday for 18 hot dogs that's 18 pretty six a day you this know. week yeah <laughs> but I, it's my first hot dog i've had in 30 years i would bet maybe even more than that but hot dogs now are not what hot dogs were when I was a kid. They are clean, pure meat. There's not a ton of fat in them. Uh, they're, the hot dog I had, it was a, uh, it was not a Nathan's. What's the other big? Oh, Hebrew National. Yep. Oh, okay, yep. Oh, my God, was that hot dog good. No fat at all. It was just solid, really well done meat. 
that feels like one of the only things that has gotten better over time. Like all everything. Oh, yeah. that, yep. like, oh mm-hmm. God, the Hershey bar back in the day was the size of your head, and it was all this great chocolate. <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> exactly. Little, 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 little Hot dogs were the exact opposite. It was pure junk, oh, garbage and taste, and now it's actual meat. <laughs> yep, it is. And delicious as hell. There's no question about it. Yeah. We have to take a break and then come back. And we're going to interview Judd Zolgad from Score North and ask him about his life. Wednesdays are going to be Judd's Life Wednesdays from now. We're not going to talk about sports with him on Wednesdays. Just what's your life all about, Judd Zolgad? Right? I like it. Yeah, turn him into a life coach. <laughs> you damn right. Exactly right. Right there. And we'll be right back with our life coach in just a couple of minutes right after this. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning, and your carpets and air ducts are the first items on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home. You could be breathing in nasty dust or dander, bacteria, whatever, you know. Zero Res platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129, a $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating, so their God of Love It guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today. Be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero Res, spell it forward or backward, it spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry free. Very, very important. You've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one, don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely and through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's an extremely knowledgeable guy, great guy too. Will help you get top dollar, which is very important, of course. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off of your shoulders. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, and now Judd Zolgad joins us. Judd, we've had many, many women. Women are the ones that reached out mm-hmm. and said... We want Judd on Wednesdays to come on and not talk sports. We want him to talk about his life, what it's all about. Where did it start? Where is it headed? These women want to know all about you. Who are these people? Well, you must cut a fine figure is what I'm thinking. Okay, well, that handsome guy with the glasses, let's get him yeah, to talk say, about it. That 54-year-old guy with the glasses and gray hair, man, I'd love to hear what he has to say about life. Well, you're very mature. You've been there for them. And now if they're younger, you can lead them down the right path, I guess, is what they're talking about. Boy, that's a lot. That's a lot to put on me right there. Well, you big Uh, baby. That's a lot to put on. That's all I'm saying. It's a lot to put on me. Um, Yeah, where where is it going? (laughs) You think I know? where Where were you born? Los Angeles. Well, I didn't know that. See, now right there. Los Look Angeles. at that. Yep. Yep. Los Angelian. Yeah, I was actually born in a hospital in Hollywood because my parents uh, met and lived in Los Angeles for years before I was born. And then shortly after that, they w- moved to Baltimore because my dad was uh, 
uh, transferred or got a, a job in retail. He was a buyer at, well, eventually Donaldson's, but he had been worked in California for a long time. So That's not what I heard. I heard he was transferred to Baltimore to build a bridge there. Bridge. How about that? Oh, my God. How in the hell? Was the guy asleep? What happened? Do they oh, I know think, yet? Yeah I, yeah, I think what they had was a power failure and they couldn't steer it. Oh. I guess they called ahead. Like, like there was something that they knew there was something wrong. It wasn't a, su- a sudden surprise, but okay. Also, I don't think uh, I don't think bridges are supposed to do that. No, like if just, you hit it, no. I don't think it's supposed to be like, well, it's going to give out. <laughs> now, yeah. th- th- thank God it was like at one in the morning because I know it was bad, but um, you know, think about if that had been like r- rush hour or something. Oh God, yeah, because yeah, it was in the middle of the night, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. I think yeah. it was one a.m. E- Eastern, I believe. And, right. And there were people, there were workers who were doing maintenance work or some type of construction on the oh. bridge. And I think those are the pe- people that fell for the most part. But, you know, God. it wasn't exactly jammed with cars. And again, that's a, that's a great thing. But that's frightening. It it looked like a, like a movie. It did. You're absolutely because it it, it kind of fell perfectly. Every yeah. bit just fell right on time. It was really weird. Yeah, the first time I saw it, I'm like, is that real? Right. And then I saw it 18 more times on Twitter or X, and I'm like, yeah, I guess it is. But yeah, what an awful story. What a terrible story. And that's too too bad. Because you know what? I like Baltimore. My parents hate, hated it. I've oh, been yeah. back a few yeah. times. It's got its problems, but that city's got some real character. And I love the East Coast because the yep. history out there. Yep. Un- Unlike here, they didn't tear down every single thing, especially in Minneapolis. They've left a lot of really, really cool historical landmarks. i got to be honest with you. St. Paul did a good job. Minneapolis came Correct. apart at the seams. It pissed me off. There were beautiful buildings they tore down. Well, yeah, explain explain that because, like, I've gone back and watched what, yep. one of my – favorite shows was and i think it was originally narrated by uh, dave moore who of course was a legend yep. um the lost twin cities yep phenomenal unbelievable and you yep. look at all that history and i you know i know there were things in disrepair but they tore everything down basically they did they tore down all the great uh I, I, seriously these buildings were be- they looked like castles they were yeah. beautiful well that's too old time we got to be Minneapolis is, look, I lived in Minneapolis for about a billion years. I loved living in Minneapolis over the north side, still love it to this day and all the rest of it. But when they started tearing those great buildings, I thought, what the hell are you doing? And it turns out, guess what? It was about money because those buildings were only four or five stories and they needed buildings that were 30 stories so they could make more money. And that was the Gateway District primarily, right? Yep. Which which yes. had what what was the building that was basically glass inside? It was just gorgeous. It was. It was absolutely beautiful. And and of course, because they tore them down in the sixties, they didn't, you know, they they couldn't preserve them at the time with uh you, you know, by get by basically being declared a historical landmark. But yeah, man, that would have been so cool. And you're right, you know what? You're exactly right. St. Paul did a good job. They did. You, you, you're right. You go down, uh, seriously, you go down Selby Avenue as you're just about getting downtown. Those buildings are just gorgeous. Just love them. And so much character. <clears throat> A lot of character. There's no question. About it. And, you know, like it, Minneapolis still has some nice spots. There's no question. I love Minneapolis. Loved growing up there. But it was all about money. Like, it, why did they do it? Because they made more money. That's well, why. Well, that, it, you know, in mentioning that that's the same i believe that that's the genesis of why they they at the time uh ripped the trolley out right yes because exactly. the bus people were like oh let's get that out of here so people have to ride the bus can you imagine ripping a full a uh, full trolley line like all the tracks all the stuff they just ripped that out for and, buses and that was who owned the bus line at the time oh i think i've heard this but i don't remember carl polad <laughs> so there you go. There, I think Kid Can might have had something to do with it. I don't know if you guys know that name or not. Oh but yeah. Oh. Eight. Yep. Oh and yeah. Hubert Humphrey. He was okay. the other one. Well, well, you know, don't forget, don't forget, our guy Sid was what? Kid oh, yeah. Can was a big influence in Sid's life as a young man. There's no doubt about it. And Sid was a huge influence in my life as a young man. There's no. Yeah. So I, I guess I got scumbag gangster in me. <laughs> well, you know, pipeline. 
you know that downtown mafia was real oh yeah absolutely like well, there's no doubt like that like that whole thing was real um and, and i mean look they got some things built they did but i mean i just can't imagine ripping a whole tro- a whole transportation system which was which was tracks that could have laid, i believe could have been there forever forever yes my i never rode the line cuz i think it would they tear it out in like the early 50s mid 50s something like that i think it was the fi- uh, yeah i think it was the 50s somewhere in the mid 50s or whatever but apparently there was a line that you could go to hennepin and lake street hop on the trolley, and take it all the way out to Big Island and Lake Minnetonka. Yes, I've How seen that. How phenomenal would that have been? Yeah, yeah. God. Tevin, this thing went, like, all the way west. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, and then, ironically, then, they just build the light rail years later. Like, you could have left the <laughs> yeah. trolley here. They're, they're doing it now. Here's our light rail. Right. Yeah. That, west, that westbound now, which is, take, you know, it's going to take forever. It's coming through SLP here. It's going out. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's the thing is, I don't think that they're, like, they ripped all the tracks out for, and, like, downtown had all the tracks in it. It did. It had all the tracks. I I will never forget that. I mean, it was happened before I was cognizant of it happening, but sure. studying it years and years later, you could literally have dinner downtown, hop a trolley, take it to Lake Street, hop on Lake Street, take it all the way out to Big Island, <laughs> hang out all day on the beach, hop on the trolley, come back up. It was wonderful, I guess, magnificent. But because of money, they had to tear it apart. Yeah. We used to be a society. Was that? We used to be a society. Yeah, yeah. good point. Very good. Well, and who convinced them that buses... Hey, you know, these people yeah. that take the trolleys now, they're going to really want to jump on a bus. <laughs> you know, a trolley, uh, you know, the rail system is somehow, in my opinion, sort of like romantic, right? Oh, God, like we're yeah. going to take the train, we're going to take it out. Nobody's ever said, you know, it's really romantic that MTC headed towards Ridgedale. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. Oh, my God. Hey, if. Tom, if you could bring back, if you could bring back one restaurant and one building downtown, what what would, would you be, bring back? Restaurant would be Charlie Charlie's Cafe Exceptional, which is now like a twenty eight story uh, office building. It was this beautiful kind of French looking building. The building was just gorgeous. Did you guys ever get to go to Charlie's? Or was it gone oh. already? I remember the name. I remember it. When, when did it go? Because I definitely it's remember. Been a long time now. I definitely remember now. Now I did get uh, I did get in at the end of what was a cafe Napoli. The Napoli was wonderful. The Napoli, yeah, that was that yep. was a gr- oh, great great food. Right on Hennepin Avenue, and what about I would guess it was about eighth or ninth something like that. Yep, yep, I think you're exactly right. Right in there, yeah, that was a great. Uh, the Piazza family was uh, involved in all that stuff. I went to high school or excuse me, grade school with those guys. Okay, Peter and Paul Piazza. What do you think of those names? Those aren't saints at all, are they? Oh hey, you know what? Ma- mom, mom wants to go to heaven, <laughs> so she's very smart. She's like, my boys are getting, you know, yep. we're going right, we're going the front of the line, biblical here with those names. And as far as buildings, any of those buildings they tore down, the ones that are still up in St. Paul were also in Minneapolis. They were gorgeous buildings, beautiful. Mm-hmm. So what are you gonna do? Oh, you gotta. Oh, we're making progress. No, you're not making progress. You're making money. That's what's going on here. That's actually great. I I haven't th- thought about the uh, the amount of stories, but that's a really really good point. There's a lot of great stories about Minneapolis. People don't understand that Minneapolis did have a rather large mafia. It wasn't Italian. It was Jewish. Yep. In uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and I will tell you what: when I lived in North Minneapolis, when there was there were mobsters living there. You didn't cause trouble, I will tell you that. Well, and that's before, uh, to, to go back, but, and not to bring up a, a bad memory, but that is, that the whole thing was the King Riots, correct? Yes. That burned it down, 67, 68. Yes, and then yep. it transi- or, or, and then it changed after that, but I mean, that, that was the whole story. It was, absolutely. I, I remember watching that whole thing. I used to go down there with Andy Fisher and the Laurent brothers and just stand there and on the corner and... Watch my old neighborhood burn to the ground, baby. Oh, my it's, God. It's, and it's all got St. Joe's Parish is gone where I went. The school's gone. The church is gone. It's all gone. When's the last time you heard them tear a church down? Yeah, very. No, yeah, they basically don't. It just doesn't happen. There's no. Some, you know what? I think all these women who, 
they got a great thing. This is going to be Judd's look back at Minnesota Wednesdays. I love this. I'm glad they're going to enjoy it. I'm glad they they're going really to. Well, I love this stuff. I do, too. I absolutely love t- talking about the – and and that's why, why do what you're talking about, the the fact that Minneapolis is such a shell just as far as the, the history goes is yeah. really, really too bad because it, it had – I'm I mean, if nothing else – just let, left, you know, a couple of those dive bars on Hennepin. Oh. Just have left them up, okay? Moby Dicks, baby. Moby Dicks, exactly. Moby Dicks. Mo- My- Moby Dicks, where if you brought in your chip from your AA me- meeting and yep. gave it to them, you yep. got a free drink. Got a free drink for your AA medallion. I'm not kidding, Tevin. That's no, a real it's story. True. I'm, is- I'm not being a smart ass. That is the saddest, but yet most amazing, <laughs> most old school. That's story New York. Like that's a New York story. It is. Yeah. I'm just imagining a bunch of people that don't really want to go to AA, but they're like, "I would love a free drink, so I'm going to sit through this meeting, get this chip, and we're off to the bar. Let's yes. go." Now, Judd, did you ever know the head bouncer there, Chuck? No, no, it uh, preceded me, unfortunately. Oh, that's. I just know the stories, and I, I did, I did have friends that made their way there. Okay, I'm going to do an impression. Chuck was the head bouncer, really good friend of mine. He's played a lot of golf with him. Just a great guy. So this is my fist. Okay, you see the okay. side. I got pretty big hands, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. This is Chuck's fist. <laughs> so oh wow! This guy had fists, gigantic. And the first time I ever met him, and here's why he and I became friends and started becoming golf buddies. <laughs> Because somebody would stir the pot and act, act like a jackass and, you know, causing trouble and all the rest of it. And Chuck would go, oh, hold on a second, Tommy. I'll be right back. I said, I'll just walk over with you. He goes, well, yeah, but don't get involved. I said, I won't get involved. I'm just going to come over and make sure nobody, I got your back, right? He would always walk over and go, okay, here's the deal. You can go out the front door and go home. Or you can go out the back door and go to the hospital. <laughs> Never said he was going to do it. He just said, you're going to end up in a hospital. <laughs> Front door works. Front, door, Front works. door works. That guy, he was a big muscle. I'm not kidding. His fists were literally that much bigger than mine. I'm not kidding. They were huge hands. Thank God he never punched me. Now you get in trouble for saying that. Oh, absolutely. You'd get, you know, that's get what, sued. Yep, exactly right. I yeah. laughed. I thought it was funny. Well, who was it? It was a very Great. famous guy got stabbed at Moby Dicks at one time. Remember the guy? And then he that he put like pulled the knife out of his gut and beat the piss out of the guy. No. That's a true story. I got to look that. Maybe one of you guys could find that story. Because it's a it. true story. Um, John. What the hell was John's last name? Somebody would know. But Moby Dicks. I miss Moby Dicks so much. It was phenomenal. Just a, Well, that corner used to have three. Not one, not two, but three movie theaters on it. There was the World, there was the, God, I can't remember. There was a World Theater, there's the, some Arts Academy, or there were three different movie theaters. The, the Lyric Skyway. was right there. Yeah. And the Gopher. It was phenomenal. You two Shinders? To two Shinders, that's right. There were not one, but two Shinders. It the was Shinders, fantastic. oh my God, I miss Shinders so much. There's a new segment we've, com- we've, we've just invented this morning, and actually it was the women who listened to this show and invented it, said, we oh. want to hear some history uh, on your show on Judd's segment on Wednesdays. So you can now you can get prepared to do this, man. You did a great job already. Well, thank you very much. See? So so the Shinders, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it broke into two right, right across the street because the brothers were feuding, right? That's correct. So these two that guys got correct. in a fight. These two brothers got in a fight and decided, screw you, I'll start my own Shinders. My favorite was the one that was on, I think, was 4th or 5th in Hennepin. You'd walk into the there, and they'd have all the magazines, Sports Illustrated, and all that stuff. And then, then there were some swinging doors in yep. the back. <laughs> yep, yep, a hundred percent. And and the best part is the swinging doors were yeah. purposely not greased. That's correct. And so when you when you open the door, it went. <laughs> Even the newer shinders that used to be by Ridgedale. Had the porn doors. I love the porn doors. <laughs> so, like Schindler's purposely, it wasn't because the it wasn't because the door was old. It wasn't because it was no. It was there. They wanted to know who was going back there, and so if you went back there, it was sort of the screech of shame. Okay, we'll close with sixteen-year-old Playland uh, between seventh and eighth on Hennepin Avenue. Did you ever guys ever go to Playland, or was it gone already? Probably, probably oh, was gone. Yeah, sounds uh, I'm sixteen years old, seventeen yeah. years old. 
And I walk in and the manager says, uh, you can only be in here if you're 18. I said, well, I'm 18. He goes, oh, you're 18, are you? Let me see your draft card. Because they had draft cards back then because of the Vietnam War, right? Mm -hmm. I said, he said, let me see your draft card. And I said, I burned it. And he goes, you need to leave before I burn you. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, okay, well, whoa, you got whoa. it. Nope. I thought I was being funny. He did not think I was being funny, I'll tell you that. Woo! God, I, I miss downtown Minneapolis. I'm, and the Nankin, we got to close with the Nankin. Oh, the Wanderer's Punch. I actually, oh. I, I think my only confrontation with law enforcement was in the <laughs> Nankin. My buddy was being a complete jackass. No. And the cops came in, and they took us all out. And the cop, like, pinned my oh, arm yeah. behind my back. <laughs> And I, I hadn't done nothing, and I said, what about my rights? And he said, you got no effing rights. There you go. <laughs> and shoved me out the door like a like a common criminal. I hadn't done anything besides drink a delicious Wander's Punch. There Kevin and Age, I'm telling you, one of those oh. was one too many. Big punch bowl filled with more alcohol than you could shake a stick at. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. And their cousin became my doctor, Dickie. Really? Phenomenal. Oh, God, Good yeah. Too. I did like the Nankin. Oh, that ankle was wonderful. All right, now you got see now you got it in your head. So uh, next yep. Wednesday, yep, we'll work we're on really it. Really start lighting it up. We'll All right, work pal. on it. All we'll right, you guys. You. See you later. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, Judd. Bye. We'll take a break. Be right back in a couple of seconds. Chris Egger to join us right after this. Mike Lindell and my pillow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code Tom, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146, go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. Hi guys, it's Chris Haggard from Channel 5 Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this 5 Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there were so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. I think I'll turn on Chris Eggert. Get it? I'll turn on him? No, uh, never mind. Uh, let's take a second to talk about my bank, North American Banking Company. If you own a business or are thinking about starting one, make sure to check out my friends at North American Banking Company. When your business is looking to capitalize on an opportunity or solve a problem, turn to their experts because they are locally owned and operated. Loan decisions are made here in the Twin Cities, not shipped out of state. This helps business owners expand with confidence. So, if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my friends at North American Banking Company? Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation. And that number is 952-925-5608. Mr. Eggert, what's the latest? What up? Oh, we were just reminiscing. There, I, all these women who listened to the show called in and said, I don't, we don't want Judd to do sports three days in a row, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He should do sports on Tuesday and uh, Thursday. But on Wednesday, he, they want us uh, to talk to Judd about Minneapolis-St. Paul history, or Minnesota history, I guess. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, we had a great time talking about downtown Minneapolis as a kid. Oh, my God. It was, it's totally different than it used to be. Yeah. And in many ways, it's not as good as it used to be. Because they had, oh, I mean, it was, 
from one end of it to the other was just a ball. From there used to old parade stadium, you could go all the way to the Mississippi River down Hennepin Avenue. Phenomenal. Be interesting to see where downtown's at in ten years. You know yeah. when all yep. this real estate, commercial real estate thing shakes out the way it's going to shake out, and mm-hmm. if they're going to turn some of that into affordable living, and yeah, it'll be interesting. Got to be honest with you, the only time I go downtown now is when they have uh, valet. Yeah, I'm not having my family walk around downtown. I'm not. A lot, there's too many nut jobs. Well, again, what drove me away from the whole deal is I'm walking down Hennepin Avenue in front of the old, I, it would be between 3rd and 4th. Uh, that big federal, was it, it used to be the federal building, that big white column building. What was that? You know what oh, I'm talking like about? Oh, like the the architecturally stunning yeah. building right there? Yes. I think yep. it was some kind of a bank, actually. But oh, I'm was not, it a bank? I'm not, yeah, okay. I'm not sure. So this, a uh, few years ago, I'm walking downtown, and all of a sudden I hear this ruckus going on, and I round the corner, and two women were in a fist fight, and I mean a fist fight, not just slapping each other and all that. They were squaring off and throwing punches and the whole deal, and both of them were naked at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, jeez. Like, it's a little different than I remembered as a kid, got to be honest with you. You know what I mean? They were literally fist fighting naked at four o'clock in the afternoon. That's funny. I remember uh, <laughs> not that long ago, we had our kids down and they weren't little. They weren't like little kids. It wasn't that long ago, mm-hmm. but a couple of years ago, we were driving through downtown and there was some kind of a parade going on. Oh, and sure. like everyone was, uh, all the gals on this float were naked or like had no tops on. I'm sure they're trying to make some kind of a statement or something. Um, yep. But we happened to drive by. I'm like, oh, well. That's different. I was, I was expecting to see that going on. <laughs> well, that's kind of different than what I expected, but you know, it's well, look. I love Minneapolis. I love St. Paul, but I look. We got to do something in the world about law enforcement again. They won't let cops do their job, and nobody wants to be a cop anymore. We've lost what, like five hundred cops in Min, in the Twin Cities. Yeah, it's a really high number, and. Yeah. And also what's coming from that is the cops who are there are working a ridiculous amount of overtime too. Yeah. We've, yep. we've done a couple of stories about that in the, in the last week or so. And um, so then the, the, the police officers who are there are being overworked because they've got to be covering so many different shifts and yeah. it, it's a, it's a tough situation for sure. But yeah, it's to, really your, to your point, uh, if I was a police officer and I had to choose one area versus the other, it's a hard sales pitch to choose Minneapolis given mm-hmm. sort of the environment toward law, law enforcement, you know, the last several years. So, Well, I didn't understand that nothing's against the law anymore, according to the uh, politicians in the state of Minnesota. I just don't get it. You can do whatever the hell you want. No, no, you cannot. You know what's going to happen? And I will, I am predicting this, and it's already happened a little bit, but do you know where basically gangs of mobsters came from. They were poor people who had to protect their own neighborhoods first and once realized when they gained that much power, that's when they became criminals. But they were initially formed pr- to protect their their neighborhoods from thugs. That's mm-hmm. where mobsters came from. You want that to happen again? Keep it up. That's all I'm saying, <laughs> right? You got to be safe at your home. You got to be safe I'm gonna, in your neighborhood. I, I'm going to go live out in a cornfield somewhere if things get <laughs> that bad. <laughs> and now, live from Litchfield, here's Chris Eggert. Yeah, uh, listen, I, I, I like I like the city, but I could very easily be in Litchfield, right? Yeah, or Hutch yeah, or something out there. Uh, so. Oh, Hutch is a nice town, too. Yeah. Save nice a little towns, money man. on real estate, too, I would guess. I would think so. That The only thing about... Um, am I talking about Litchfield? Yes, where they, they built that huge uh, wall, Walmart out there. In the uh, downtown area now is just not. Is that Litchfield? I'm not know? sure. I'm I not sure. I always mix, uh, mix up Hodge and Litchfield. One of the great things that I love about small towns are their downtown areas. I don't care if it's two, three blocks long. Those old downtown areas in small towns, I just love them. Long Prairie, Minnesota, man, where I was born. Uh, and now, of course, you drive down there, and it's just a complete disaster. The Long Prairie movie theater is even boarded up. I'm like, what the hell? It's uh, it the small town economies are ha- they have a tough yep, time. It's uh, you know, a lot of the jobs and a lot of the people have come to the city, but 
you did see a little bit of a resurgence during COVID of people leaving the city and moving back out into right. you know, the more rural areas, but um, you were correct. Yeah. Oh, well, so got- here's the big, the big story today. Uh, okay. if, you, if you can name a town in the twin cities area, which you think would be the place to go to buy weed, what would, what would that town be? It's a town, not the Twin Cities, not Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's not Minneapolis or St. Paul. Uh, it's a Park. It's a suburban city, the spot to go to buy weed. Actually, Brooklyn Center. I'm going with Brooklyn Center rather than Brooklyn Park. Okay, Tevin, do you have a guess? I I believe I know what article you're referencing, and oh. my jaw almost hit the floor when I was like, yeah. they're going to do what, and they're going to do it where? Yeah. Uh, AJ, do you got a guess? If that's if that's the lead, and I'm going to say something stupid like a diner or something. Like I that. agree, it would be a diner with that description. It's yes, uh, why Zeta? Yeah, why, why Zeta? Yeah. What? Hey, they're not okay. dumb. Listen, that's an entrepreneurial <laughs> community out there, and you don't don't tell me they don't know how to make money. All right, uh, yeah, they, you're right. They're they're looking into. They're going to hire a consulting firm looking at opening a dispensary, a city run dispensary almost like a city run liquor store so why is that a yeah there you and go and they want to they want to control it which yeah again right. like that seems smart like then you don't have yep. xyz happening they go this is how we're going to do it we're going to control it like this we're going to make money off it so mm-hmm. and i guess there's other municipalities that are, that are looking at it too but why was the big one that that jumped out because you don't always think of why as being like you know drug haven spot. No. The spot. No, you're right. Feels like an episode of Weeds or something like that. Yeah, right. Right. That is the ticket. All right, Pally, a magnificent closing story, I thought. Guys, Holy have a good rest of your day. You too, Chris. Thanks very much. Bye. Channel 5's Chris Eggers is brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. We'll take a break. Be right back. Got a great guest coming up. I love this guy. Very, very good guy. I'm not telling you who it is yet, though. It'll be after the break, right? Matt Carlson from Lake Sotheby's International Realty, recognized by Minneapolis-St. Paul Magazine as a super real estate agent, has been selling homes since 2002. Matt has homes in the Florida Keys and in Minneapolis, so he uniquely can help home buyers and sellers in both markets, but specializes in Monroe County, all the Florida Keys and their home listings. The way to get a hold of Matt is go to www.onekeywest.com. That's onekeywest.com. And, of course, Kristen Eklund, she's listed as one of the top 100 mortgage brokers. Just did a huge interview in a national magazine, Kristen Eklund did. Kristen is from Alexandria, Minnesota, now lives in the Keys with her husband and loves helping folks finance their dream home in Florida. Kristen is a colleague of Matt's, but has her own separate successful business called Coast to Coast Mortgage in the Keys. You can contact Kristen the same way you contact Matt, onekeywest.com. That is onekeywest.com. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert. When it comes to fixing your car, you judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold's an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market, the economy. He knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation 48-minute evaluation. you got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. 
Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard, that'd be your boy here, is a paid endorser. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Great guest coming up. Tommy Davidson will be with us. Let me know when he's ready to go, if you would. Yeah, I think he might be running a little late from his last interview, so I'll keep an eye on the phone. It happens. We got there right on time, though. I'd like to point that out. Got there right at 845 because we're professionals around here. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. It's not our first road. At least one of us is. I don't know yeah. about Tevin and I. <laughs> oh, you mean, oh, I thought you meant like you were, that Tevin and I were on the outs. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm the furthest thing from a professional. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Non-professional AJ, whatever it takes, right? Yes. Well, I hope uh, Tommy can get here in the next, as long as he's, he's on by 50, we'll be okay, because we just got to do the break at... Uh, at 58 and then mm-hmm. we've got another guest mark pellegrino's coming up at nine so yeah hopefully he'll well he'll i'm sure he'll hop on in the next four or five minutes so that'll be great mm-hmm. i love tommy davidson anyway he he, he came in the studio a couple times over at kq and just a really really great guy you, ever, you guys ever met him no i haven't no he uh came to i believe he came to the house of comedy once yeah when yeah, that's right. i was there and if i remember correctly he had kind of a weird take his shirt off bit i believe it was probably <laughs> you know, that stuck out but uh no from everything i've heard very nice guy and he used to be on the uh, steve harvey show is where i heard him from oh, back God. in the day steve harvey where'd he go is he still around yeah i think he's still doing the family feud thing right oh steve is he oh that's right yeah. it is a family feud no you're right i know he doesn't do comedy anymore he's not really i think the kings of comedy was the last time he really yeah. did anything of that ilk but now he's more of a talk show guy and i'm gonna give you my thoughts yeah well that's yeah he's a pretty decent guy too i had him on a couple of times that was one thing about the queue that everybody who came through town would just kind of come in whether they announce themselves or not they just come in and mm-hmm. knock on the door it's like okay well but i it all works out in the end uh, but yeah, let me know when Tommy's ready to go because I really, like I said, I'm a big fan of his. Uh, we've already talked about the fact that uh, both uh, Tevin and AJ are wiener connoisseurs, so we can move on from that story. Uh, I don't want to cover the bridge collapse anymore because they still haven't found what they they cannot find six people. They are presumed dead, obviously. Yep. But they can't even find them. That's terrible. Yeah, I would assume current of the river. Yeah. Probably dragged them down a ways. Yeah, because I would imagine if your car did plunge to the bottom, the first thing you would do is to open a door or a window to try to get out, and then you're done. Yeah. Once that water rushes in at that rate and at that uh, weight, too, you got no chance. It's really unfortunate. But a uh, question for both of you and all of our listeners. Would you rather have a 100% chance of winning $1 million or a 75% chance of winning $100 billion? Oh, that's a good one. That's a that's a, because seventy five percent. Yep, is still high enough. Are we talking about just picking numbers out of a hat type of thing, or well, I guess I, just a chance to win a hundred billion dollars, seventy three three out of four chance of winning. The smart thing is to take the guaranteed million. That is true, but but I seventy five percent chance is high enough where I go. Right. I'll take. I'll take my chances at 100 billion. See, the thing about 75% there for me is that my mind is like, okay, 75. We can just round that up to 80, which is basically <laughs> like 90, which is 100 essentially. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's the safe bet. It's just fine. Um, but I feel like if you actually gave me that offer, I'm probably going with the safe 1 million because that would uh, that be fantastic right now. Yes. <laughs> Honest to God. I, I love that. So do you do that on dates? You know, 75% chance is fine, but when you get to 82%, it's a little bit better. But after that, 87%, and eventually yeah. we'll get to 92.5. And then, you know, it's 100% basically. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's what all the hell it's, kind of math are you doing? It's the same type of math I use when <laughs> the day is almost over. I'll be like, okay, it's almost yeah. 530, which means it's 30 minutes till 6, which means I've only got two hours left. So I'm pretty much <laughs> almost done already. Yeah. Nice call. That's all I have to say. Nice call. Uh, you guys ever watch Pirates of the Caribbean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's getting a reboot. Did you know about that? 
Uh, I heard no, that they were see. thinking about it. I don't know that I would be first in line to go watch it just because it was so good with Johnny Depp and yeah. everybody. Yeah, I got to agree with you on that. Johnny Depp is one hell of a good actor. There's no doubt about that. He's a weird son of a bitch, but he is one hell of an actor. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. I remember I that was like one of the only movies I've got. I can't remember which one it was, but seeing Pirates of the Caribbean like at midnight when everybody's dressed up in the theaters back in the day. Like, right. Oh, God, was, yes. Yep. Oh, so such a great experience. Yeah. It was a great experience. Now, without knowledge of it, you know, because Tommy's uh, – he may not be able to show up. I hope he does, but I, I can't get into this story because if he does show up, I don't want to cut this story off because I want to see the answer and I have to click on the screen to get the answer. The headline is, what happens at your job after you die? <laughs> what? Whoa. I mean, that's a little harsh, isn't it? It's a, yeah, that's a little dark. And I feel like a lot of people aren't going to like the answer of everything just kind of continues to move along. I don't miss you at all. Yeah, you weren't even around. <laughs> oh, did he die? That was that was Don Rickles, as a matter of fact. He was talking to my friend the other day. It's unbelievable. He's talking to his wife to get him to think about getting a divorce and all that stuff. And I, you know, I just so I, I went to my uh, wife and I said, let, "Let me ask you a question. I know we'll never break up, but I mean, what what are you gonna do when I die?" And she said, "Well, the first thing I'd do is, oh, did he die? <laughs> his own wife." Really? Not. God, I miss Don Rickles. Did you guys ever get to have a chance to, to go see him live or did he, did he ever come in studio or any of that stuff? No, unfortunately not. That was He is one of those kind of icons that <sighs> you wish you could have seen him do his thing live. Yeah, a little, before, a little before my time, but like yeah, the, true. the highlights, you know, like the clips and stuff, the him making appearances at like award shows or like they've had him on Comedy Central roast and stuff. He's yeah. just, he's one of those all time classics. He said things to people that no one else could get away with. Yeah. There was, he's on stage in Las Vegas. There's a couple in the front row. First thing he does, he looks down at his couple and goes, are you two Jews? That's the first thing he says. Because Don Rickles was a Jew. So, you know, he goes, are you Jews? He goes, okay, sir, what's your deal? What do you do for a living? And I should mention that his wife had a, a sizable nose. Is that a good way to put it? Sizable? <laughs> sure. That works. So he says to the guy, so what do you do? Oh, you do that? Okay, that's really great. So, okay, so who's that next to you? Well, uh, Don, that's my wife. Well, what's your wife, an eagle? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you believe he would? He had actually said that live on television to a guy, and the guy started laughing, and the women did not laugh. None of the women thought it was funny at all. I guarantee the drive home from the show for that guy was. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult. I would have to agree with you that it's just, uh, oh, this is good, unfortunate because we're not going to have time for Tommy Davidson anymore. That's too bad. Yeah, we still haven't gotten a call. Yeah, so it, yeah, it, it's because we got to get to Mark at 9 o'clock and we can't get a break in. I mean, if, unless he wants to come on for two minutes, which I don't think he does. But no. that's too bad because I love Tommy Davidson. I love talking to him. He's a really, really nice guy. And it's one of those situations where it, you know, the people love having them on so much that they don't shut up and then you don't get to interview them. So yeah. we could always rebook them, though, right? Yeah, I'll reach out to Art and see what was going on and see if we can get him on a different day. Okay, so now I get to click on. Yeah, because, I mean, even if he popped on now, we couldn't do it. It's just yeah. we don't have time, unfortunately. But we love Tommy Davidson, and I, I should mention, as a matter of fact, he was coming on to talk about his latest single, You Show Me, Tommy Davidson's exceptional range from stand-up comedy and acting to versatile music accomplishments. I've earned him a reputation as an extraordinary performer who delivers no matter the arena. It is true. Tommy Davidson, we will try to rebook him because he is a terrific guest. Great guy, as a matter of fact. Okay, but now I have about three minutes, four minutes, where I can click on what happens at your job after you die. <laughs> because Kevin's guest was nothing changes. Yeah, um, that's that's my guess. There's no uh, memorial or parade that they throw for you. It's just kind of out the door. It's just a who cares kind of deal. Yep. Unfortunately, an Australian influencer broke down what would happen at your job if you died. Basically, they would just come up with a plan of action to cover for you. And then everyone would forget about your existence within six months. Won't you pricks do that to me? Six months from who? TB? Whoa. Never heard of him. What? Who's that? Uh, Thom? I don't remember. Thom. Yeah, Thom. Who's Thom? Thom Brainerd? 
Yeah, Thom Brainerd, he was unbelievable. What a what a legend, Thom Brainerd, ladies and gentlemen. So the moral of the story is apparently if you hate your job, leave your job because they don't care about you anyway. That's kind of negative. Yeah. Well, it's the same kind of concept with what are you saving up your vacation days for? Like, yeah, use those things. Your job doesn't care that you stayed, you know, didn't take a vacation. They're going to like go have those experiences with your family. That's exactly it. So I just, I don't know. Well, I'm a perfect example of that because I started at, at the queue on, uh, what was it? I think it was March 17th. It was a March or April 17th of 1986. And then 37 years later, I got fired. It's like, what? I mean, think about that. Mm-hmm. No, I should mention the one good thing about that is when I was there, uh, we had the highest rated morning show in America at a 35 share. And now I believe it's a 1.6. So good for you making that decision. That was really smart. Have you ever noticed people in management generally are stupid? I mean, guys too young to comment on that. It it depends, (laughs) but there are definitely situations in place where I've worked where just because somebody has been, you know, hanging around as the assistant to the assistant for 20 years and now they get promoted and you're like, okay, maybe it would be beneficial to have some fresh set of eyes on this or something a little bit more open-minded. Yeah. Uh, My, at my old hockey retail job, we had this guy who came in and he would just like, you know, got hired as an assistant manager and this guy was just not, not great at all. He, it, it got to the point where he was like, just giving away it like very busy hockey season, dead, dead heat of winter. Right. And it's, you, know, you, you have people waiting to get their skate sharp and it's a natural thing. People understand, mm-hmm. but he'd be like, if anything got over 10 minutes, sorry for the wait. Here's a roll of tape. Here's like all this stuff. We're just giving stuff away. And then the owners of the store were like, why are we so low on stock on some stuff? And <laughs> People are like, yeah, uh, this guy keeps giving it all away because he feels bad. Like, no, it, it's it's just because you have the name tag that says manager, it yeah. doesn't always mean you are the smartest person in the room. Anyway, for new listeners, I should mention, by the way, I took a shot at the management here because they're both friends of mine, so I can do that. So it wasn't serious, you had lame brain. Yeah. Well, I hate working with these. What's that? For my current situation, they're all great. Yeah. <laughs> in case well, I, I feel the same way, but I'm not going to ever I'm tell them that even on the air. Dan and Amy, oh, I guess they're okay. You know, that kind of deal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We do have to take a break because we have a very special guest coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Pellegrino, promoting Mark's return as Virgil Poe in season two of American Rust, Broken Justice. And I love Jeff Daniels, too. Uh, The full season drops on Prime Video to what's tomorrow yeah thursday march 28th drops tomorrow so we'll take a break be right back mark pellegrino our special guest up next hello i'm brad huckle president and chief lending officer at north american banking company and i'm michael bilski ceo at north american banking company as a locally owned and operated community bank we work with many multi-generational businesses take personal care dentistry of roseville for example Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my client on your side, seeking justice for the injured. 
at Sean Bryant. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning and your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating, so their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero Res. Spell it forward or backward, it spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Are we good to go? We sure are. Mark Pellegrino, our very special guest, Mark's return as Virgil Poe in season two of American Rust Broken Justice with Jeff Daniels. The full season drops on Prime Video tomorrow. Pellegrino is also one of the stars on Netflix, uh, highly anticipated Beverly Hills cop Axel Foley, still slated for release on July 3rd. I could go on and on, Mark Pellegrino. Is there a day you don't work? <laughs> uh, so far, it's been I've been blessed, so I hope that continues. You never know as an actor. Well, that is true, but uh, just what I'm talking about for the people so to understand, we're talking about American Rust Broken Justice. We're talking about Beverly Hills Cop, Axel Foley. Mark Pellegrino is best known for his work as Lucifer and Supernatural, Paul Bennett and Dexter, Jacob and Lost, James Bishop and Being Human, Clayton Haas and Quantico, Deputy Bill Standell and 13 Reasons Why, and movies like The Big Lebowski, Dexter, American Rust, Jurassic Park. i got to take about eight breaths here, Mark, for Christ's sake, why don't you work some more? <laughs> I'm on that page. Uh, I'm 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 open now. Anybody want to hire me? I'm I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready to go. Magnificent. Tell us all about. First of all, uh, you and Jeff Daniels, a great pairing, I think. Oh, I love him, man. I've I've been yep. a fan of his for a long time. He's such a great actor and so smart too. And when we've done TCAs, you know, the Television Critics Association stuff, uh, I'm so happy that he's helming the show because. He uh, he can do it like the president. He's like the president of the United States. You know, if, they, yeah. if you're the one on the call sheet, you have to be a politician and an actor. And he's able to to pull it all together. You know, and uh, he's so smart. He's so smart to work with. He's so simple, so honest. I feel like every time I work with him, I'm going to school again. I and you know that's a great way to put that. I, I love. You know what? Almost every great actor I've ever talked to, because I've been doing this now for 53 years, and. Um, I've interviewed just about everybody that's ever been born, apparently, and that that's exactly the deal. Jeff Daniels is that kind of guy, but so are you, Mark Pellegrino, I will tell you that. People love working with you. Uh, thank you so much. It's, uh, I love hearing that. I try. You know, I try. I try to always have the student's mind, you know, and, and learn every time I work because, you know, I feel like I'm a work in progress myself, so. Yeah. So for people that, that might not, I, I'm sure everybody's seen American Rust, Broken Justice, the second season coming out now, but for maybe the one or two, what's it all about? So it's about a family that lives in a, a small Rust Belt town called Buell, Pennsylvania. And in the first season, uh, there's a murder that, uh, that um, Jeff Daniels' character gets um, drawn into and twisted up in because the main suspect is my son. Mm. And the first season is about you know, trying to uncover who who did what. It's a who done it uh, that sort of pushes uh, Del Harris, uh, Jeff Jeff's character, further and further down the rabbit hole. And then by the time we get to season two, there are a lot of unanswered questions and mysteries that are dangling from season one that have to be resolved. In addition to a couple more mysteries that that come out that are uh, pretty hair raising. So. I'm looking forward to, to what people uh, think of season two. And Virgil Poe has a bit of a great arc. I think in first season he was an absentee dad, mm -hmm. you know, very irresponsible child, you know, a man child who never really had a relationship with his son. And season two finds him trying to make up to his son and trying to be a dad and trying to be an adult. And, and what comes out of that I think is going to be very interesting. You know, it's amazing. I finally get to ask you this question. Mark Pellegrino, ladies and gentlemen, talking about American Rust Broken Justice. Was Virgil Poe based on my father? <laughs> he was based on mine. <laughs> but it's, it's so funny that you, there's a C 
scene in season two where um, you sort of go into the backstory of Billy and Virgil, and it's, it's a horrible scene where where Billy uh, stumbles onto his dad having an extramarital affair. Ooh. Sort of Virgil's thing. And uh, all he wants to do is tell him that he got most valuable player, and he gets, you know, he gets uh, blindsided by, by his dad. That scene was so hard for me to do because... Um, I felt like I was having transference, total Billy transference. Like that was me as a kid with my stepdad, oh. you know, rejected in the same harsh way. And I really had a tough time with that scene. I mean, I broke down crying in one take because it sure. bothered me so much. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't know if that was the, the the take that they wanted or the take that they took, but it was devastating. You know, it's amazing about that, Mark. As the same experience living at the. Uh... 1200 Spruce Place right by uh, downtown Minneapolis by Loring Park. When I came home from uh, the, the school is right across the street. And every time I came home as a four-year-old, five-year-old, kindergarten kid, first grader, whatever it was, my dad was always coming out of somebody else's apartment. And I never did. Why is he always in somebody else's apartment and not ours? And then I finally figured it out, Mark. You know what I mean? Oh, God, that's horrible. Oh, it's yeah. terrible. Adults can really suck. They shouldn't have. They, I'm sorry to say this, but they shouldn't have, uh, you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day. They should have kids' days because the kids are the ones that have to, you know, deal with these these parents that you know that you know they can have kids because they're biologically ready to, but they're not emotionally or spiritually ready to have kids. And with my dad, he was a World War II veteran who had PTSD, and nobody knew what that was at the time. So he was, you know, there was all kinds of crazy. I used yeah. to hate coming home. So for me, it was like dread, you know, absolute dread that I had to go home and deal with this crazy person. Do you think that's why, and I'm, you know, I, I do mean this, do you think that's why you're such a great actor? The, the, the fact that it affects you, your life is part of who you are as an actor. The fact that you broke down and started crying because you have the memories, right? I think so, yeah. You know, sometimes those memories can be blocks to your emotional mm -hmm. life, but if you're open, they, they actually provide a lot of good baggage for you. They, they actually can make you deeper. And so and it, it's weird, but it, it's funny that you say that too, because at times like that, I actually thank him in my mind. Yeah. Because if I didn't have, if I didn't have that experience, I might not be as sensitive as I am to other people or as, as, as aware of certain things as I am now. And, um, and, and, and it came out of that experience as horrible as it was. But that being so horrible makes you fearless now as an actor, Mark, and that is a great thing. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. That's that's an important thing to have as an actor. You know, it's, I would say courage because mm -hmm. you're, you're afraid to do stuff, but, you know, you just go through anyway, and you, you, you let the thing that you're trying to do be more important than the feelings that you're feeling. And, and you, learn, you know, that I did learn that from him. You know, I, I learned to be afraid and stay in the pocket anyway. No question about it. Now, I know we only got a couple more minutes, and, and I do want to get your take on American Rust Broken Justice. Season two, what's season two all about, Mark? Well, season two, you know, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have to tie up all the loose ends from season one, and there's yeah. some significant ones, uh, because Isaac is coming, was coming home and uh, was probably going to confess that he committed the murder, and Billy was left in a coma, and good old Virgil knew uh, that uh, Grace had set the home on fire, and he knew that there was something going on between Dell and her. It looked like their whole house of cards was going to collapse. So first of all, you're going to have to get through that, and then a whole other set of issues that are going to come up. Um, there's a couple people that wind up dead in this episode that are going to surprise you. Oh, my goodness, a couple people. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll close with this, Mark. You're a great actor because of uh, what you went through. And, and it's, uh, I know it's hard to accept the fact that it, it made you what you are, just part of what made you what you are, but it did. And, and uh, you know, you and I have never spoken before, I don't think, but I knew that the second that I started talking to you, because I've watched you over the years and all the rest of it. Uh, so look at it as a gift. I know it's a painful gift, but it was a gift, right? It was a gift, and that's a good way to look at it, because looking yeah. at it the other way... Um, just going to bring you down, but looking at it as a gift keeps you moving forward. Hadn't seen him in years. I got a call. My father was dying at 60 years old and I don't know why he wanted to see me, but I went to the hospital to see him and he died. And my, he was not Catholic. He was uh, a 
Protestant guy, but my mother, they were, hadn't been together in decades, but she sent a priest anyway. He died. The priest comes up to me and says, Tom, I'm sorry your father died. And I said, Father, he probably had it coming. I will never forget that as long as I live. So take that home with you, Mark. All right? I feel like we were separated at birth because I had a very similar experience. But, you know, I don't think we have time to talk about it, but it's just crazy when you when you bring this stuff up. It's like, man, same. But I could tell the kind of actor you are, the way you act. It went, he's been through it, man. I can tell he's been through it. Great job, Mark. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Have a great day. Bye. You too. Mark Pellegrino, ladies and gentlemen, American Russ, Broken Justice with Jeff Daniels, Virgil Pope, of course. I am not making that up, by the way. I can always tell with actors, really good actors, and he is. Mark Pellegrino is a damn good actor. That guy went through personal hell to get as good as he is. You guys do believe that, too, that really, really good actors like the Marlon Brandos of the world and, you know, Mark Pellegrino in this situation, they've been through hell, and that allows them to go on that camera and do what they do because they've already been through the worst. You you can Mm -hmm. only teach, like... I'm acting in yes. so much, but yep. to actually pull from like life experience and actually, yep. you know, recalling certain memories and stuff. I'm sure a guy like Mark has that edge over maybe somebody who grew up in Beverly Hills and they got to go to acting school and you know maybe they didn't have like that kind of trauma or that sort of those hardships growing up. So uh, a little easier for him to channel a certain uh, character than maybe mm-hmm. somebody else will. And one thing I can I can tell you and thank my father, because I watched him being taken away in a straitjacket. He was in an institution for a long time. Mm-hmm. He was a total asshole to me. There's no question about that. But the one gift he did give me was I am not afraid of anyone. Because he was so terrifying when I was a kid that nobody else scares me. That's a good thing, don't you think? Yeah, I think in most scenarios is good to not be afraid i'm sure there are some times where hey maybe your <laughs> flight or flight should kick in and that'd be good, out, <laughs> that'd be a good idea. I'm afraid. yeah no it's a whole different world but i i really like that man and i had never i don't think i've ever talked to mark before maybe i did one or, or two other but but i watch him act and i go man there's a lot of stuff i recognize in the way he delivers yeah well and he's in everything <laughs> everything I, he's, he's in everything really in everything when i <laughs> pulled his picture up and then it lists his credits and it listed yeah whatever 20 shows there's another 40 that i'm like yeah i've recognized him in like the obviously dexter burn notice gray's anatomy um chuck numbers prison break <laughs> like, it just keeps going on with all these hit shows that he's in yes. at least one episode yeah. like so he's doing all right no he's great and i, I just i'm glad that he was he was able to talk to me about that stuff that he would talk to me about that stuff. Cause a lot of guys mm-hmm. hide that. No, right. I don't know what you mean. I, what he was very open and honest about it, but I think it's for any young people that are listening right now, whatever harm has been done to you, use it for your own benefit. Cause you had to suffer through it. So you should be able to use that and learn from it and don't do it to anybody else. That's the number one thing you learn. If you've been treated like that, don't do that to other people, right? Yeah, break the cycle. Mm-hmm. I love it. We will take a break and be back. The Christine Kristen, is that what we're gonna call her from now on? Pristine Kristen? Gosh, I almost wish her name was Christine. Cause then it would be like Pristine, Pristine, Christine. Christine. But I'm gonna, stick, I'm gonna stick to Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> get a GG, okay. Carlos Carol. Yep. That'll work for me. We'll take a break. Be right back. Kristen Burt joins us right after this. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt, is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 
212 and work with local professionals you can trust. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You are indeed, ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Burt. Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabankco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. God, we just had a great conversation with Mark Pellegrino. What a great actor. Fantastic. I'm sorry I missed it. Oh, I heard God, the aftermath good. of you guys talking about him, but I didn't get to hear the interview. Yeah, he and I have a lot in common. I will tell you that. <laughs> not as far as acting ability. That's not what I'm talking about. But as far as, uh, you know, dad might have been a pain in the ass to old Mark, just like Uncle Tommy. So what are you going to do? You got to use it. What you got to do instead of sitting around wringing your hands and hating your parents or whatever, your mother, your father, whoever did it to you, understand what it did for you. It strengthened you and carry that into the world with you. There's something good came of it. They didn't mean to do anything good for you, but they did. Right? Therapy is also good. Oh, why are you looking at me when you say, why are you looking right at Tom, therapy. Wait, let me look at Tom. No, (laughs) for everyone, therapy is good. It is. No, that's absolutely true. Yeah, do it the healthy way. No question about it. I do remember one time talking to a friend of mine, because I have a couple of friends that are really good psychologists. And his name is Renee Sterno. He's just a great guy. A really good friend. Great, great therapist, the whole deal. And I'm talking to him about this, that, and the other thing. And I honestly got, I didn't mean to do it, but I realized I probably sounded a lot like Marlon Brando. We were talking about my childhood and I went, the misery. <laughs> <laughs> I went, wait a minute. That was kind of Brando-esque, wasn't it? <laughs> it was very dramatic. Very dramatic. Well, it was very dramatic. There's no doubt about that. But no, I think it's, people need to understand that therapy actually is very good for you. You got to get somebody good to do it though. Yes, and it's good in good times, too. That's the other thing. I think people only think they go for the bad times, but it's also good just to keep you in check, even in the the times in your life where everything's going right. You are great, uh, right on the money about that, sister. So, you know, one thing, I I thought we were just talking to Mark Pellegrino about this stuff, and and we didn't get to it because we were just talking about other things, but because of streaming, television is just getting better and better and better. It's amazing. The product that's on your TV screen now is amazing. It's interesting, though, because people are fighting it. You know, I've been watching, um, if anyone's watching the fight right now between Nelson Peltz and Bob Iger at Disney, Nelson Peltz is like, why do we need a Marvel's movie with all women? Why do we have to be an all black cast for Black Panther? (laughs) Which it isn't. But um, then I sit there and I think, have you watched any of these movies? (laughs) But he's really, the proxy fight is really interesting to watch uh, to see whether Bob Iger or Nelson Peltz, who's 81 years old, by the way, wants to win this fight. (laughs) Is Bob Iger a pain in the ass? 
You know, I haven't encountered him, and it's it's funny. I feel like he's had two eras. Yes, you know, the, right. The pre-pandemic era, like Bob could do no wrong, and and so much changed. Yep. I think a lot of our attitudes changed, and I'm talking just about the general public um, of how we feel about big corporations, including Disney. Disney's not excluded from that narrative. Right. And you know, Bob Ch- Chapik made tons of changes that Disney fans really hated, and then Bob. Iger came in to like save the day. And I think his mentality was like, I'm the superhero. I've yeah, got this. Yep. And the climate just changed. And so now he's trying to navigate that. I, I think he's going to be able to right the ship, to be honest. But he has made some missteps that I don't think would have ever been called out five years ago. You know, what's amazing about that is I, I worked for him for a long time because KQ was owned by Disney. And he, I will tell you, if you were one of his people, he reached out to you and you talked to him and he was very pleasant and he was grateful for the job you were doing. When I worked for him, he was great. He was wonderful. So I don't know, you know. Yeah, and listen, we've seen this before. Anyone who watched the rise and fall of Michael Eisner yeah. um, and Disney, which there's a couple of great books out there about that and it's fascinating to watch. But again, they, they crown you king and yeah. then they go, oh, now that you're at the top, flick, we're going to flick you down the mountain. And, and we do that to celebrities. We do that to politicians. It happens over and over again. He got really, really mad at me one time. And I, boy, Eisner did, did I hear about it. Iger did. No, not Iger. Uh, what's his Eisner. name? Eisner. Eisner. Yeah. Yep. What did you do? Eisner got really pissed off at me because they did that play, some had to do with African animals or something, but humans played like the giraffes and all. What the hell was the name of that play? Like the Lion King on Broadway? Lion King. Yeah, Lion King. <laughs> yes, Lion King. Because I, they, you know, it debuted in Minneapolis. Yeah, yes, coming, they did the pre-Broadway tryout there. Yes. It did in Minneapolis. Coming back in like two months. Just... Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, a, Michael apparently got pissed off at me because I was asked, well, what would you think of it? And I said, it was one of the worst pieces of crap I've ever seen in my life. I hated it. You should be Michael, in trouble for that. Michael did not like that very much. <laughs> that I said Tom that. Bernard, you should go to your room for that because I will say what Julie Taymor did was actually revolutionary in theater at the time. Dreadful. You look at it now and you're like, okay, it's good. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I, I saw the original Broadway cast. I was living in New York and mm-hmm. I, rem- I remember this because I- I'm a theater kid anyway, but I remember the experience of watching <laughs> the people dressed as lions and giraffes yeah. yep. and everything else coming down the aisle of the theater because it's gorgeous puppetry is what it is, but mm-hmm. it's human puppetry. Um, and I audibly gasped and I'm the kid that my mom took me to the theater beginning at like age three. I've seen it all. She probably took me to a chorus line way too early. Uh, if you know the sure, <laughs> the content sure. of that, but it was really one of those theater experiences. I will always remember. And because at the, at the time it was revolutionary and the audience, people were like, look at that. Oh my gosh. It was like you were three years old again. And at the zoo, it was really kind of cool. Okay. So uncle Tommy will close the story the the really bad ending. And luckily they sold the, uh, they sold the place later. And while he left, eventually is what happened. But he actually, during the morning show at the queue, he was in town for the debut of The Lion King. And he called me on the hotline and was barking at me about this, that, and the other thing. He said, yeah, great. I got a job to do. Goodbye. He really got pissed off about that. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that Eisner won this fight, and I'm, let me tell you why. Oh, he won the fight, did he? This the Lion King fight, not the overall Disney oh, okay. fight. Right. He won the Lion King fight because it is still playing on Broadway to this day, and obviously it's coming to Minneapolis over thirty years later. Well, it's not for everybody. Theater Nothing is not is. A, musical right. theater. Is you either love it or you right. hate it. I don't really think that there's any in between. A lot of yep. people hate that you have a fight and then you're like, let's sing about the fight. Blah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. But yeah, I, I, I adore it. it. I mean, for me, it's my genre. So you're either like you're either the nerdy theater kid or you're not, which is you, Tom. Yeah. Well, also, Michael Eisner, I never liked the fact that he had to appear on screen like Walt Disney did Mm -hmm. on Sunday nights. I was like, that's Walt's job. Get the hell off television. Yeah, the ego was definitely there, but he drove a ship that was very successful. Yeah, he did. Yep. In the late 80s, early 90s, and then things got really messy. um, Yep. And it's really kind of fascinating to the behind the scenes was really fascinating because the egos just started getting in the way. No doubt about it. So you're blaming that on me because I told him it was horseshit. 
Is that your uh, third it's not movie? actually that Michael <laughs> Eisner getting ousted from Disney had nothing to do with you. You Good. are wrong on on the Lion Great. King, but that's OK. okay. <laughs> but we you're don't... also allowed to have an opinion and think it's yeah. not for you. Yes. Yep. So all it's, these things yeah. can coexist together. <laughs> I wanted to be a giraffe and they wouldn't let me. That's actually a lie. But uh, no, I just you should have been like Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Yeah, there you go. God bless him. But it was, it was, a, it still is a massive hit, isn't it? It, it certainly is. And yeah. it, it's so funny now because I've had friends who were in the original cast and did the, the tours and now they're like too old to play some of the roles. And, you know, it's a whole other generation of theater performers now doing it. And I think that's incredible. And that particular movie is so timeless. It's why they eventually did the live action version. But I, to me, there's nothing more pure than the actual animated film. And I think any preschooler still, it resonates with them all these years later. Is Michael Eisner still around? He's alive. I'm is not he sure really? what he's doing. Yeah. God, he's got to be 90, isn't he? Uh, 82. He's only 82? Yep. Just well, celebrated his uh, 82nd birthday, March 7th. Excellent. Well, happy Thanks birthday. Thanks for that fact right off like you had it. Uh, Are you like Googling Michael Eisner? Any like, time name he? is mentioned, I Google... Because you I do. Know somebody's going to ask a question. You do do that. That's true. I, I think Michael Eisner is one of those guys that looked like he was sixty when he was forty. Do you know that? Like, yeah. Those yeah, that's right. That you, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. They yep. look way older, and then you're like, "How are they only 82? <laughs> I know. I thought I literally thought he had to be ninety years old because he looked old then, thirty years ago. Right. He was only fifty-two. He looked like he was about seventy. Yeah, he's stressed out from working so hard. With I was going to say that fight behind the scenes with Jeffrey Katzenberg like yeah. did him oh, in. Oh God, that's right. That's oh God. That's how what we got DreamWorks. Yeah. Yep. There was a famous book, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's about the battle for Disney between Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg and the board. It's weird because it's kind of repeating itself right now with um, Nelson Peltz. And by the way, if anyone doesn't know who Nelson Peltz is, he's a billionaire, but he's also the father of Nicola Peltz, who happens to be married to Brooklyn Beckham of Victoria Beckham oh, and yeah. David Beckham. Yeah. So kind of like this weird sort of like mix of like Hollywood and sports and business. This is for the three of you and all the listeners. Do you know what happened to me after I had that battle on the phone with Michael Eisner? No. Nope was the last time I was ever sent passes to Disney World. I never got them again. <laughs> you, were, you were on the do not enter list. I was on the do you not enter list. You must pay $8,000 for your Disney trip now. <laughs> well, I'm going again on uh, the, the, this weekend, so that's, I better go to the bank and get a lot of cash because it ain't cheap. Get your Genie Plus pass, too. Don't forget. Genie Plus? Genie Plus, you have to buy it at beginning at midnight, <laughs> and really? then sign up for all the yeah. But it gets you all of the, it gets you to the head of the line a lot faster. So What's if you want to Genie enjoy Plus? your day, Genie Plus. We had uh, an escort last year, which was phenomenal. You got to go backstage and you get to you know first in line and all that stuff. Isn't that four hundred dollars an hour, Tom? It is six thousand dollars for the whole day. Nice. Absolutely. Six thousand dollars. I'm like, whoa. But I think you're allowed to have up to ten people. So if you do it, yeah, yeah, right. But you still have so to six... pay for admission to the park on top yes. of that six thousand. Yes, you do. That's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, that's the deal. So everybody ends up paying in the group. You pay like six hundred bucks a piece or whatever, you know, which is still a lot. But it's the whole day, so it's really not a lot then. You know, it's like I guess seventy bucks an hour or something like that. I mean, it's a lot and of money. You Don't tip your tour guide. Did you tip your tour guide? I absolutely, I did. There's no Just question. Double about. checking. She was great. <laughs> Actually, I I asked her if she would appear on the show because she did such a great job, and Disney wouldn't let her. Yeah. They they won't let them do that kind of stuff, which is unfortunate because she was really good. She was terrific. I think that they have Disney ambassadors that are allowed yeah. to do press, yep. but the rest of the cast members are not allowed to. They're pretty right. strict on that, which I get. But it would be fascinating to hear some of the stories of being a VIP tour guide. Oh God. Yes. See, that's exactly what I want. And I suppose that's why they wouldn't let her come on. Cause I wanted to hear maybe some of the not so pleasant people stories. You know what I mean? The one thing, if you do do it though, and I, like I said, it's not cheap, but if you do it in a group, it's a lot cheaper, 
but you get the best view of the fireworks that night. It is unbelievable where you get the parade. The I mean, parade, everything. All of it. Yep. They'll get you snacks so you don't have to wait in line. Yep. There's a lot of like really good benefits. So I always, it is expensive, but if you do it with a group of yes. 10 and yep. you do it kind of as a once in a lifetime experience, it's mm-hmm. worth it. All right. Any closing words on brilliance that are coming out on a TV or movie screens? Uh, Today, kind of a light day, Grownish uh, premieres, has its season premiere on Freeform, and anyone celebrating Easter or a big history nut uh, can also go and watch Testament, the story of Moses, that mm-hmm. docudrama premieres today on Netflix. And okay. oh, by the way, everyone, um, Hulu is now integrated into Disney Plus. Yeah. So you yep. will start seeing all of your content right there on uh, Disney Plus. It's going to encourage you to get that Hulu bundle with Disney Disney plus if you don't already have it okay i have to warn you because we still have two more days thursday and friday to work there, there is no easter this year it happens to be on the same day as my wife's birthday i know so it's... easter's out birthday is in kb1 has risen <laughs> oh god i hope she didn't hear that because i'm gonna hear it the rest of the day if she heard it she's your queen come on tom she, i adore the woman you know that there's I no do. question about it all right my dear we'll talk to you tomorrow Sounds good. Have a good one, everyone. Kristen Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. That was a hell of a show today, fellas. I I, I love the idea of talking, you know, things like history and all that stuff with Judd on Wednesdays. That was a good... Women, it was all women who suggested it. I think it was a great call. Beautiful call, right? Absolutely. The show flew by. It was fun. We can do this every day. I thought so. Yeah, most definitely. Mark Pellegrino is a great guest. I hope Tommy Davidson can reschedule for tomorrow because I really do like him as well. He's terrific. But I will talk to you guys tomorrow. The family shows up in about 15 minutes. See you. See you.